This year's special because it's our 10th anniversary of Dragon Theater. I used to teach a theater class at the Club of Arts, and through this class I met Nat Hall and his parents. Uh, they came from the Bellevue Youth Theater in Washington, uh, where everybody who auditioned got a part. And we actually followed uh, the gentleman at the Bellevue Youth Theater. We f kind of followed his example and built ours on his and really made it a truly inclusive community theater. Matt Hall named our company after Leslie Levengood's Dragon Stories. Leslie was a student in my theater class at the Club of Arts. She passed away the year we started Dragon Theater, and so Matt thought it would be a really fun idea to name our theater company that we were trying to start around her uh, based on her Dragon Stories, and um, the very first play we wrote was an adaptation of those stories. And it was just great because it was kids with any kind of needs and then any kind of abilities, and everyone was guaranteed a part no matter what. No one is discluded. No one gets cut. Everybody gets a role. If you audition, you already have a part. Growing up, I wanted to be an actress. Now I am living a dream. It's just wonderful how much of a community we, we have made and we've sustained. So I will be directing A Connecticut Kid in King Arthur's Court, which is uh, adapted by RP and written originally by Mark Twain. They were kind enough to let me try my hand at writing again, and I, I always appreciated that, especially because I'm a fan of Mark Twain. We were going to do the Dragon Anthology to celebrate our 10th year anniversary, and then we also wanted something that would be connected to the Pikes Peak Library District. Leslie was a young woman with a disability, and so she wrote these dragon plays that are about her experiences as a person with a disability. The dragons in the play are really friendly, they guard the castle, and she just had this vision of these imaginative fun dragons who are there to help comfort and kind of lift the spirits of the castle kids who live there. Garfield and I get to go ahead and play a couple of those dragons that get to look for this dragon fire no one knows and has a clue where to go ahead and look for this and so you know as we're kind of going on our journey we're realizing that hey this dragon fire happens and we feel good inside whenever we help someone. I played as Chart, the colored dragon and the keeper and guardian of all colors. I'm the one who makes the announcement to harm no one. I'm an ice dragon, a blind ice dragon named Skizzer. I'm a knight. My name is Sir Boris of the Evil Moen. Matt loves the evil characters, and so Shere Khan was, was the evil character last year. This year it's Merlin. It's really a cool place, you know, since it's so diverse and there's a lot of inclusiveness, it just feels like somewhere I need to be. I keep coming back because I love the theater. I think this the acting is the best thing in the world because it's, it's encouraged me and inspired me to speak more and just be myself. I get nervous around people, but this was an accepting environment uh, where I could be myself. I just become that other person or that character that I'm supposed to be. And it gives me confidence. If you're passionate about it and you really want to do it, there should be some place for you to do it and that's what Dragon Theater is. Some place where you can go ahead and be that crazy self that everybody else is kind of like, well, they're a little bit over the top. It's like, well, you know what? We need you to be even a more over the top because that's what theater is all about. You're seeing people all kinds of different people, all with all different challenges. We've all got our own challenges. And you see people in, that are in our theater having success. And I think that really helps people grow too and enjoy life more. I want people to see what folks are capable of instead of only seeing what they're not capable of. And theater is a fantastic way to, to show that, to showcase that. I think without um, some kind of avenue for Garfield to really get to, you know, act out different characters. Um, I think a lot of it would have been lost. I mean, he's opened up so many people's eyes to kids with disabilities. And, you know, realizing that, hey, just because you have a disability, you can have an ability as well. I get to a character as a GD like this. <clears throat> JD of the Lab! Mm.
my dream is to be a singer and acting and singing and it's just helping me get better at that dream. For actors who maybe wouldn't get these opportunities elsewhere, they've got full resumes now, you know, where they can like write down 10 to 15 different roles they've played. I love people that maybe, you know, in other places, other aspects of their life haven't been treated that well. And here, you're treated well and you're respected. And everyone's on the same playing field. We're all putting together this one piece and we all contribute. I mean, the most important thing people want is to contribute to society, to life, to art, to beauty. And this is a really good place to contribute. I just wanted to say to all the viewers who are watching it, that if you can believe that you can do anything, you can do anything anyway. We have a great time. <laughs> Come see us. <laughs>
squishy noodles. Squishy noodles. Squishy yes, noodles. Yes, yes. Take some. We will share. Step six. Step six. Add tomato paste to the squishy noodle. Should I just dip it? Sure, yes. Dipping it is fine. Mm, dipping. Let's see. Oh, there we are. If you're having trouble getting your spaghetti to stick together, remember that eggs are a good binding agent. Egg. Oh, there we are. Mm. Eggs in the noodle. Egg eggs in, in the glove. noodle. Eggs in the noodle. Mm. I think we I finished. Th I think we are ready for the plating ceremony. Mm. We shall plate it. Here we are. <laughs> yes. Okay. Plating. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's add some Parmesan to make it look nicer. Mm -hmm. Say when. <laughs> Say when. Say when. When. Ooh, just like my mother used to hunt and peel herself. Thank you for joining us on Cooking in Space. Be sure to like and follow us on Ugram and Institute. We are still not sure how to make friends, but we would like you as friends and subscribers. And you will like watching us make things instead of you here in outer space. And maybe someday you can see the things we make when the spaghetti-shaped meteor we lost just now in space visits you on Earth at 522 miles per second in 827 years. You're welcome. Enjoy your day on Earth and your gravity. Gravity. Gra gravity. Gravity. Ooh, space, space noodles. Meteor. Mm, space meteor. Space mm, meteor. Yeah. Spaghetti meteor. Spaghetti meteor. What was that? Have you seen something? It appears there was a glitch in the social show. I have informed this in turn they stated that they were running the test to fix it um, What's our status on comms and navigation? Good. Didn't mean to scare you, Instant Gun. Sorry, sir. And channel checks are good. And navigation, by the way. Navigation should be ready after I finish up a few checks. My engines were working fine last week. How can they not be responding now? You know what? Don't answer that. You put back to me to the bridge in ten minutes. Sorry, sir. No need to be sorry. You're just doing your job. I'm glad to have you on board. Clearly the Academy would disagree. What makes you say that? There was another student in the engineering program who had a much better score. If the assignment were based on test scores? We would get someone who would not fit the chemistry from the crew that we are looking for. Chemistry isn't based on test scores. It is based on other characteristics. Respect, honesty, integrity, determination, and desire. I can stand here all day listing off the things that Finnegan and I are looking for in a crew. We handpicked each and every one of you from a long list of candidates. 
and you are all here because you meet the standards that we want and what are upheld by the Emporium. Ensign Gunn? Yes, sir. Ready for your orders. Station keeping. Lieutenant Wagner, bring me the Erickson Drive online. Ensign Chamberlain, set the sensors for a broad scan. Space dock has cleared us for departure. Very good. Gun, clear the docking clamps. Aft thrusters one quarter until we clear the space dock. Dear the guy, I know that you see me as a sped kid, but I'm more than that. You see, I can do anything. I also know a lot more than, more things than most people do. You see us as these labels, but do you really know who we are? You made us start believing you, that we were bad. Yes, we did something wrong, but that doesn't make us criminals. I would like to say sorry for my actions. This conduct wasn't becoming of Space Fleet Academy cadets, but we couldn't stand by and let someone label us and write us off as bad kids. Not when we have such a bright future in Space Fleet ahead of us. We had to stand up for ourselves and this, here's how we did it. Good morning, Space Street Cadets. The guy will be here to let you know what you're doing today to make up for your unruly behavior. <laughs> 
Good morning, Space Cadets. Today, you will be writing letters for me explaining how you embarrass the Space Fleet. Sir, I don't think I belong here. No talking! But, sir, I can already tell you what I did. I said no talking! Now, I will be in my office, and if I see or hear anything, you will be in trouble, and you will all have to come back here to the disciplinary day tomorrow. <sighs> I can't believe I have to be here today. We wouldn't be here if you weren't throwing your food. I didn't think you'd start a food fight. I didn't actually do anything but watch. I said no talking! I have a plan to try to get out of here. What is it? I'm going to ask if I can get some help with the assignment and when the guy comes over, you guys can sneak out. Hey, great idea. Isn't there a space shuttle in the next bay over? I can drive. He'll never catch us. Be ready when I say go. Escape on three. One, two, three. Escape! Escape! Oh. <sighs> I don't get it. May I help you? Can I have some help with some math homework? Go! <gasps> oh! get, get back here! Now! Get back here! Don't, no, don't even think about taking off in that shuttle! Don't you dare take off in that space shuttle! Taught us. But exploring new planets and civilization sure is fun, and we didn't get eaten. We lived on three. One, two, three. We, we lived! There, the guy. I know that you see me as this bad kid, but I'm more than that. You see, I can do anything. I also know a lot more things than most people do. You see us as these labels, but do you really know who we are? You made us start believing you, that we were bad. Yes, we did something wrong, but that doesn't make us criminals. Maybe stealing the spaceship did, but we brought it back. So, it probably doesn't even count. More like a joyride. But the point is, you came here saying we embarrassed the Space Fleet Academy, but we didn't. We saw new planets and survived new life forms, and we kept each other safe. 
If that's not Space Fleet's mission, I don't know what is. We aren't bad, we're bold, and we're your future. We are back with a brand new edition of the Amazing Cosmic Race. Ten teams from different planets will be competing for one million Latinum balls. This year we have challenges from all over the galaxy, including humans. Yay! Fluffy, who do you think will win this year's edition of the amazing cosmic race. Well, I mean, I think the Zorlon have a really good shot for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about the humans? Well, they're new, you know. They haven't been in space too long. I feel like the Flatgar or Zorlon team just have more experience. Mm, let's talk to some of our contestants and see what they think. I am so pumped to enter this race. Last year, my father is sick, having a bad case of the, the green skin disease. He's at home watching TV. I know it would mean so much to him if we win. I'm stressing out so much it's making me molt with feathers flying down off of my arms onto the ground don't know if I can find them at all and put them back on me. I'm excited to meet the humans! Without humans, would we even have television shows? And the Bachelor show? <laughs> we didn't decide to redo that one. We left that one to the humans. <laughs> This is Earth Ship Spectator calling Alien Coalition. We are approaching Rendezvous. Captain Raleigh, welcome. Please proceed to the docking port five. We have prepared a traditional Earth welcome for your arrival. My crew and I would be honored. Please proceed with one specially selected crewmate to the debriefing room as soon as you dock. Weird, Captain. Why did they only provide one chair if they insisted on the two of us? I don't know, Lieutenant. Maybe they need to examine us one at a time. Oh, yeah. Decontamination. Mm -hmm. We could have brought so many earthly diseases we don't even know about. Like in the War of the Worlds. Mm -hmm. Want me to go first? Thanks for offering. But it's my duty to step up first, just in case. I'll keep you apprised by Comlink. Thank you, Captain. I really appreciate it. I don't mind telling you this, but this is the most exciting thing we've ever done. I agree, Lieutenant. Just think. First contact with an alien civilization. Excellent work on decoding those coordinates. I really appreciate it, Captain. Oh, is that some sort of, like, two-way view screen of some kind? Maybe this is an interview. Well, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Well, Lieutenant, wish me luck. I know you'll make Earth proud, Captain. Greetings. Please 
state your name, occupation, and favorite pastime. Okay, um, thank you. I'm Captain Wilhelmina Raleigh of the Earthship Spectator. I've been in command for three years. I enjoy soccer and chess. Why do you wish to make first contact? Earth wants peace with other species. We want to exchange ideas and trade. Uh, what is your relationship to the human you have brought with you? Lieutenant Brito? She's my second in command. Is that because you wear the pants? I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you wear the pants in your relationship? Pants, 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 pants. wear the pants. pants. We both wear pants. It's part of the uniform. What makes you think you will succeed at first contact? Will you be the fastest species in the galaxy? We Earthlings have much to offer. We are new to starfaring, but we have learned much. We have a rich culture, and we work hard. That's kind of boring. Can you punch it up a little? I'm sorry. What do you mean? It's true. Ah, you may be confused. You are on an episode of The Amazing Cosmic Race. We have prepared this special television event for your human arrival. Please keep your answers more sensational for our viewers. Mm -hmm. I will provide an example. Here is what the Zorlon team said about you. Ooh. Mighty is Zorlon Armada. But I'm the mightiest. The humans will never keep up. So Armada is in the lead. Come on, we got to win this race. I am sure we will be in ritual combat before this ordeal is over. I love ritual combat! <laughs> the humans like green blood, they'll never defeat us. I'm confused. That's not... I mean, we want peace. You know what would be good. You can trash talk your partner like this. Trash, trash, trash. Trash. Trash your partner. Trash your partner does to do. You do not know it's on the show. Ooh, giddy. Ooh, giddy. So I'm on a show. Yes, the amazing cosmic race. Humans love amazing races. Mm -hmm. Right, sure. Okay, can I go back to my captain now? Does your captain ever get on your nerves? Give us all the juicy deeds. Mm, juicy deeds. Juicy deeds. Juicy D! Juicy D! Juicy D! I am not going to insult my crew. They're the finest people I've ever worked with. You've got to give us something. This is the most important competition we've ever held. I'm sorry. You don't understand. We're not like that on Earth. Not so. We have analyzed millions of hours of broadcasts. Aside from your status updates and news reports, the majority of your transmissions show these behaviors. You love competition and catty chit chat. But that's not what we wanted. You aren't seeing us at our best. Then why did you broadcast so much of it into space? Well... That's just where the signals go when we're done with them. So you have been dumping things that you don't want anymore into the cosmos? No, no. We still like to watch them. It just kind of leaks. I'm puzzled. Why do you like to watch people behaving badly? 
because it's fun? You're not supposed to act like that in real life. Then why do you call it reality shows? Well, because we... I honestly don't know. The multiverse needs protecting, and the crew of the starship DTP is here to protect it. Stargate 8675309. The infamous General Z has stolen the Cosmo Crystal, a weapon of mass destruction. Our mission, is if we choose to accept it, is to recover the crystal before my arch nemesis Use it to destroy the multiverse. Captain V? Yes, G Major? We have arrived in Planet Zorb's orbit. We are ready to review the plans to rescue the Cosmo Crystal. Very well. <clears throat> First matey, G Major, I am ready when you are. As you look at this, we were able to go ahead and find a abandoned mine to go ahead and get into the castle, which will take us down where the Cosmo Crystal is. Then next, plan number two, we actually have equipment for you to wear, anti-gravity to help you levitate, and reflective to go ahead and make sure that none of the lasers get you. We have your gloves and your cuffs to go along with it, so you'll be able to use those. G Major, you're up. Number three, we have a rock of the same weight as the crystal, so you can touch them. Number four, to protect us from the wolves guarding the entrance, I have created a series of notes for me to lull them to sleep. And once we get past the wolves, the wolves, we will be able to have the crew of the DTB be able to beam us up to safety. Excellent work, team. Can we rescue it? Yes, we can! Let's do this thing! Meanwhile, back in Castle Zorb, General Z has plans of his own. Start date. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. And now that Compton B on his way <laughs> to steal my Cosmo crystal, and I are to him. <laughs> Seven five three oh nine. Stop it! All Z will here. General Z. Our intel has reported that spaceship DTP is are in orbit as we speak, and Captain B and his crew are coming. Is Plan One in place? Easy walk. Easy walk. Report. Yes, we have switched the Cosmo Crystal with the Copycat Crystal. Just like you said, right? Right, just like you said. And plan two. We have taken the trap 
and put it in place. That way when you spring the trap, there's an invisible force field that they will never see coming. General Z loves it when a plan comes together. Well done. Come on, Mikey. Let's go. The crew gets the captain ready to recover the crystal. Here's the entrance to the crystal cave. The Cosmo Crystal is right down there. G Major, it looks like everything is doing well. The gloves and everything. He should be able to go ahead and switch it out pretty soon. Remember, Captain, it's crucial to switch the crystal and the rock simultaneously. No pressure. The computer says that we are going to go that way. Right. The sooner we get off this planet, the sooner we head back to the ship. Did anyone think that was really easy? Speak for yourself. Unknown to Captain V's crew, all of General Z's Z-Wolves had earplugs. What are you going to do with us now, brother? Say what? Wasn't expecting that one. Yes, my brother. Will we show this old school? Yes, an old school of dance song.
only got the copycat crystal. That is the shrill crystal right here. Uh, what? Wait, I switched that crystal. Wait, you switched the crystal too? No. <laughs> Star date 86753100. The starship DTP has successfully recovered the cosmos crystal. The multiverse is safe for now.